Hello, uh, dear participants at the ITU Digital Transformation Dialogues. A warm welcome to today's session of the series entitled Immersive Inclusivity, Enhancing Virtual Worlds with Accessibility. My name is Nevin Taufi. I'm co-chair of Working Group 8 on Sustainability, Accessibility and Inclusion of the Focus Group on the Metaverse. I'm very happy to be uh, the master of ceremony of this uh, important session. Before we begin, I would like to take a moment to explain the session's format. Actually, today's webinar is part of a larger series by the ITU called the Digital Transformation Dialogue, DTD. The DTD is in its current form brings experts from a range of industries and specializations together for webinars such as this one we are holding today in fireside chats and in also ask the experts sessions. The objective is actually to avail an open space for sharing experiences, knowledge and best practices. Today's event will address how by incorporating accessibility features into virtual world environments, developers can ensure that individuals with diverse abilities can participate fully in virtual activities and compensate also for challenges they might encounter in the physical world. This series will host also other exciting upcoming events in different themes. Uh, our ITU colleagues will provide a link in the chat for future sessions, and we encourage all participants to remain part of the conversations moving forward. Before I introduce our moderator and speakers, distinguished speakers for today, I would like to highlight a few logistical points. First, 
All questions from the audience will be taken during the Q&A session after the panel. So if you have questions you'd like to submit, please do so by typing in the Q&A window. The Q&A icon can be seen at the bottom of your screen. In addition to your question, please also indicate the city and country you are connecting from. Finally, the webinar is being recorded and the recording will be made available on the event website. Thank you so much for your time and attendance. I'm honored now to introduce the director of the Telecommunication Standardization Bureau, Mr. Sizu Ono, who will be delivering today's opening remarks. Mr. Ono, you have the floor. Thank you, and ladies and gentlemen, and distinguished guests and participants are joining from around the globe. I'm delighted to welcome you to the, the uh, webinar on immersive inclusivity, enhancing virtual worlds with accessibility, uh, which is part of the ITU Digital Transformation Dialogue and is jointly co-organized together with the Egypt and the Ministry of Communications and Information Technology, as well as Universitat uh, Autonoma Barcelona. Today, uh, we gather here virtually to uh, commemorate an occasion of the uh, profound significance World Autism and Awareness Day. It's a day where we come together to celebrate the uniqueness, the talents, and the in incredible diversity within the uh, autism community. As we convene under the banner uh, of immersive inclusivity, enhancing virtual world with accessibility, we recognize the importance of uh, creating environments uh, that embrace everyone uh, regardless of their uh, neural diversity. Autism, autism is not a condition of, uh, to be pitied or feared. It is a face, a fact, a, a facet of a humanity to be embraced uh, and celebrated. Individuals, the autism, the autism spectrum, uh, bring a wealth of perspectives, skills, and insights that enrich our society in uh, countless ways. On their ex exception, exceptional abilities in areas like uh, mathematics, music, and art to their unique way of, ways of seeing the world. Autistic uh, individuals uh, challenges us to expand our understanding of what it means to be, to be human. In the digital age, uh, the concept of inclusivity um, takes some even, uh, even greater importance. As we immerse, immerse ourselves in virtual world and online communities, we have a responsibility to ensure that these spaces are accessible, accessible to all. This means uh, this, uh, designing platforms games and experiences with, experiences with the needs of autistic uh, individuals in mind. With, uh, whether it's uh, uh, through customizable settings, sensory and friendly interfaces, or a thoughtful uh, a representation of the diverse perspectives. At the ITU, we work to raise awareness, we provide uh, trainings on key accessibility issues, and we develop international technical standards that help uh, the uh, tech industry to mainstream accessibility features. Our Metaverse Focus Group is placing much emphasis on accessibility. The group has, has been highly uh, productive in, in this arena. Its output 
on accessibility, a comprehensive covering the technical matters, as well as those relevant to policy, law, and economics. This group is creating a basis uh, for the new ITU standards to support an open, inclusive metaverse that contribute to sustainable development. The group has launched, launched work uh, that will remain an important uh, sub subject to, for, for the ITU for years to come. Today, let us uh, reaffirm our commitment to creating a virtual world that welcome everyone, regardless of their abilities or differences. Let us uh, harness the power of virtual world to break down barriers, foster understanding, and promote empathy. And let us uh, pledge to build a future uh, where every individual, regardless of their neural diversity, can thrive and contribute their unique gift to the, to the world. As we mark World Autism Awareness Day, let us celebrate the strength, resilience, and the infinite uh, potential of the autism community. Together, let us uh, strive to create a world that not only ac uh, accepts differences, but celebrate them, uh, because it is uh, embracing our diversity that we truly unlock the full potential of humanity. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Director, for your inspiring words and for the initiative to hold this uh, webinar uh, on the occasion of the World Autism Day. Um, now I would like um, to welcome actually our uh, moderator, uh, Dr. Christina Yan Zhang, who is going uh, to be actually leading the session of today. Uh, Dr. Christina is the CEO and founder of the Metaverse Institute, and she is also a Metaverse pioneer. Dr. Christina is vice chair of the UNIQ Metaverse Working Group on Sustainability, Accessibility and Inclusion, co-chair on pre-standardization for the Cityverse Task Group. She also sits on the Advisory Council of the Center for Science Futures at the International Science Council with the UN mandate to advise on the impact of AI on the global innovation ecosystem. I would like to welcome my dear colleague, Dr. Christina. Christina, you have to fl the floor to lead us into the interesting discussion. Thank you so much, Naveen, and uh, hello, everyone. It is my honor to be the moderator for today's session. So in today's session, on the occasion of World Autism Awareness Day, we will be exploring the link between accessibility and the virtual world to pave the way for more inclusive and immersive virtual experience for users of all abilities. This occasion significantly elevated by the commitment of UNSDG resources, showcase the powerful intersection of sustainable development goals and autism advocacy. To discuss these challenges today with me, we have very distinguished speaker, for example, Pila O'Reilly, who is SG MV, Working Group 8 co-chairman and professor at UAB. Pilar working at uh, UAB in Spain in the Transmedia Catalina Lab, and she has written and uh, edited many books, nearly a hundred academic papers, and almost the same number of book chapters, all on media accessibility. So with that, let's start the conversation today. Pilar, over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christina. Um, let me first of all, let me see if I can share my presentation. Can you see it? 
yes, it's coming. Fantastic. Okay, I'm more relaxed now. Um, thank you very much, Christina. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank ITU for organizing this session. It is very important uh, to bring awareness to all the disability de days from the 3rd of December, which is the general one, to today, which is the Autism Spectrum Day. So thank you very much, ITU, for remembering this and uh, and to bring this uh, into the metaverse. Um, so it makes the metaverse more accessible, more inclusive, and more human. So thank you for that. Uh, and uh, I think that was very clearly expressed by the president's uh, opening speech. So um, that's one thing. The other thing is that I would like to thank you, um, TSB, for organizing this uh, series of, uh, of uh, meetings, on online meetings. And uh, of course, to my co-chair, Nevin, um, because um, without you, work group eight, which was um, sustainability and accessibility, would have not done as well as it has. Um, also, I, I think, I, I think, no, I do. I do want to say that I am very, very happy to be uh, in this uh, presentation with Saha and Abdel Monem from Egypt. It is, a, it is an honor to be presenting with colleagues from Egypt because it's really a, a country that has been pushing accessibility and sustainability very much uh, in the metaverse. And they're not easy um, subjects. So again, I'm very honored and thank you um, for allowing me to present with you. And without any more thank yous, I would like to present um, what I have to, to say. And it is, uh, the presentation is called Universal Design for an Ac Universally Accessible Metaverse. Um, what is universal design? Universal design, uh, in, in, in media accessibility, there are two different approaches. We either develop something that we are trying to offer um, accessibility for everyone, and we know that whatever we designed might not be for everyone at all times. A good example is a ramp to a building. Um, uh, it is better to have a ramp to a building than have stairs, but it might be that sometimes someone cannot access even in a ramp. This is true, but at least is the, is the maximum that we can offer to, to break the barrier of uh, stairs. Well, this is the approach that I would like to put forward to have accessibility in the metaverse, that we go against uh, the idea that we develop small applications for uh, conditions. First of all, because I think conditions is the wrong way to approach disability. I think capabilities is the way to approach disability. And also because um, we change as humans, we keep on changing all the time. So what the technology that might be very useful today, uh, it might not be useful tomorrow. Why? Because we change. For example, I have to keep on changing my glasses as I grow older because my eyesight keeps on getting worse. So um, it would not make, make much sense to have an application for the um, glasses that I need today because in two years' time, I will be changing. So it is better to have an application that uh, gives um, to everyone, not just to me, with these glasses. That is the idea of universal um, accessibility. Um, this slide has got um, a, a fire, fire extinguisher. And why did I put a fire extinguisher? Because I think nowhere, uh, or I think in, at least uh, in Europe, you can't open any space without a fire extinguisher, any space, physical space that you open, and it is open to the public, you must have some safety regulations and safety procedures. And without these safety procedures, for example, to have um, this fire extinguisher, you can't open, you can't open a public um, environment. And to me, this is very much like the stairs in a, in a, and the ramp to a building. You can't uh, have a, a building with a stairs, I mean, a public building with stairs. You need a ramp to access the building. The same is to me the metaverse or virtual worlds. You can't have virtual worlds without a fire extinguisher. Uh, you have, you can't have, it's metaphoric everything. You can't have um, a virtual world 
without a system of communication for everyone. And for everyone, I am talking here about languages. I'm talking about um, disabilities, like someone, people who cannot see at any stage of their lives, uh, people who cannot hear properly at any stage of their lives, uh, people who have uh, are in the spectrum, for example, as well. And perhaps um, they want to be represented in the metaverse in a, in, a, in a certain way, and they want to navigate in the metaverse in a certain way. So to me, uh, it is of, uh, it is obligatory. I mean, to me, there is no conception that we would build uh, a metaverse that is not fully accessible for everyone with the maximum um, services that we can. And uh, everybody thinks, okay, these access services are going to cost money. Well, yes, um, uh, and, and then for how many people, is, I always, always have the same issue. How many people are they going to use this application that is costing me money to produce? Well, I don't know. How many times do you use the fire extinguisher in your shop? With no fire extinguisher, no, no shop open. With no accessibility, no metaverse open. How many people are they going to use the fire extinguisher? I don't know, and I don't care, because it is obligatory to have it. How many people are going to be using uh, translation from one language to another, from, for example, sign language to oral language, from uh, how many people are going to be using the captions that you can activate today in this meeting. I don't care. The idea is that we have them there for you if you need them. Also, the idea is that unless a fire extinguisher that costs money and it doesn't give you any benefits beyond being able to open the shop, and putting the fire out if you ever have a fire. If you um, activate accessibility services, they are so very rich on data. So you can then uh, have a business model on data on the accessibility services. So it's not just uh, for free. You do have a possibility uh, to in fact gather a lot of data. So with that in mind, um, the idea that the metaverse must be accessible from the start and with as many accessibility services as possible. Uh, I have to say that I am very, very grateful to ITU because they were ready to jump to the challenge of accessibility from day one. So we had a, a work group, work group eight, that we co-chaired, Naveen and myself, and we are very happy, and I think we can speak in plural, Naveen, we are very happy to inform you that we have delivered 10 documents um, and they are very important because um, accessibility should be delivered and the requirements and the guidelines and they should be delivered as soon as possible. So whenever you are thinking on building anything, any product, any service, anything on the metaverse, you do already have the guidances here. They have been approved. They are here. I think they are the, the, the 10 guidelines, the 10 uh, deliverables are very comprehensive on what you would need to set up an accessible, inclusive metaverse for all. And uh, please use the documents, they are freely available. And uh, if you cannot find the documents, um, please um, send me an email and I will be very happy to send them to you. Thank you very much, that's all. Thank you so much, Tila, for such a really insightful presentation. And uh, we all know how important it is to ensure, you know, any kind of digital future we are facing need to be inclusive and accessible. So now I'd like to turn things over to our next speaker, Dr. Adele Moman and Al Saki. He is uh, the chairman of the National Academy of Information Technology for Persons with uh, Disabilities of Egypt. And uh, so he's uh, leading lots of really interesting projects at this moment at the Egyptian Ministry of uh, Communication and Information Technology. So Dr. Al Saki is an established scientist co-authoring many different peer-reviewed scientific journal papers, conference presentations, and articles, as well as three US published patents. And he has about 25 years of experience in technologies covering academia, industry, and the relevant managerial positions. Doctor, the floor is yours. 
Thank you very much for the introduction. It's actually a great pleasure to be among uh, this distinguished uh, group of experts and colleagues. Uh, thank you, Dr. Pilar, for the introduction. I'm also delighted to be having my talk here before Dr. Soha. Uh, so let me take things a little bit uh, forward. And the title of my talk is really to stimulate inclusion in new digital and virtual tools. So when we are talking about the metaverse here, I would like to think that we are not just creating a virtual world, but we're also using these tools to enable and to include uh, persons with disabilities and to empower them as well. So next slide, please. Okay. So here, when we are talking about disabilities, uh, we are talking about really 15%, according to WHO on average, worldwide of the population. And this includes the different types of the disabilities or special needs as well. And this is actually from, comes in conformity with the uh, SDGs, particularly for the good health and well being, the quality education, because education is very important, and the inclusion within the educational system is of, of utmost importance, really. Uh, also, developing these tools and making them accessible or using them uh, as assisted tools uh, for PWDs also comes in conformity with the industry innovation and infrastructure SDG, uh, as well as reduce inequalities and sustainable and accessible cities, if you wish. Uh, so the goal here is to achieve living with independence, inclusion, as well as empowerment, where no one is really left behind, as Dr. Pilar uh, pointed to. Uh, so here, the digital inclusion and assistive technologies comes hand in hand as, as far as uh, I personally see it. Actually, it's very interesting also to point to that there has been a global report on assistive technologies. This came like in the uh, year 2022, if I remember correctly, by the UNICEF and the WHO. And it actually points to the fact there is almost one billion uh, person in the world who needs these tools directly or assistive tools. And as I pointed to that the digital inclusion or the digital tools at large uh, comes in hand here and they are enabling tools. So next slide, please. So when we're talking about the metaverse, uh, if I think about it really, uh, are we talking about a new term? Like, yes, we're referring to the virtual tools mostly nowadays, uh, but this has been a progression of technology over years and over decades, the last decades. So when we started, uh, you know, maybe in the 90s by making these platforms for communication, we have already started to create these digital communication channels. Uh, this is... Uh, earlier than Facebook and all of these tools that came in when we first started with messenger tools and things like that. So these are really, if you think about them, they're enabling tools and you can put accessibility features as I'm going to point uh, to in my next slides. But let's talk about, so when I'm talking about the metaverse really here, I'm talking about virtual and the digital world. So if I, what, as far as I can look at it, I can see that we can look at platforms. So this comes at as social meeting platforms or communication platforms. Uh, these platforms can create services. We can see now even you can have like uh, chatbots uh, that are using AI to offer services. Uh, WhatsApp, you know, all these tools were coming in, uh, very much useful uh, for the general public, as well as uh, persons with special needs. Uh, also, you can think about gaming, and gaming is not just for, for fun, really, but the gaming platforms, uh, they can be used for education as well and for skill development. So education and skill development, they have their own tools, including uh, the, the online uh, meetings or online lessons, as well as uh, the content that you could develop on these platforms. Uh, 
so all, all, all of this really, as examples of this, for example, you can produce or you can make education uh, more accessible to the public. Uh, and uh, it, it also doesn't need a lot of equipment. So if you're talking about virtual labs, right? So these tools or these virtual platforms, they can be empowering, empowering to the educational system as well. Uh, also, if you can think about more advanced things, and if you put the new technologies in, you could think about the digital twinning. So this comes really very useful for modeling, for education, for simulation. Uh, if you are talking about virtual tools, so people who even have difficulties moving uh, around, so they they can uh, have virtual tools, uh, distance learning, uh, and a lot of really a lot of things. So if you're talking about the core technologies, so the technology really has progressed a lot during the uh, the, the last several decades. Uh, Apart from the computational power, and we're talking about now more virtual worlds, whether we're talking about uh, things that are developed for VR or virtual realities, or uh, yeah. we're using AI uh, tools as well. Uh, but there are, there are technologies that really are enabling and we are advancing, particularly in the last decade. So when we're talking about machine learning and AI, and this is really enabled, for example, text to speech and speech to text, which is very useful, for example, for uh, persons with uh, reading disabilities or reading challenges. Uh, also, object character recognition, image and scene description. So all of these tools, uh, they are um, assistive technologies or assistive tools. So if you're talking about the sign language and as Dr. Pilar pointed to, if we're talking about avatars or if we're talking about uh, converting not just from text to speech, but now also to sign language. So this is an enabling tool for a uh, person with uh, communication difficulties or uh, speech uh, difficulties. Voice overlaying is also uh, an important tool. Uh, if we are talking about technology or physical hardware, because the tools are really, whether they are software or hardware. So if you're talking about the, the, the software is being produced, and particularly when we're talking about these virtual worlds, if we're talking whether we're talking about virtual reality or augmented reality, uh, we need a lot of communication power, which is becoming available nowadays, uh, particularly with this breakthrough in GPUs and things like that and a lot of uh, um, leading companies in this domain. Uh, we're also talking about using devices and alternative senses uh, to enable various inputs and perception in the real world and the virtual world. So let me also reiterate here that we're talking about being in the virtual world. So we want to enable accessibility in the virtual world or use these tools as assistive tools to enable uh, PWDs. Uh, so when we're talking about tools, we come with also, we want to take other signals from the body or other senses. We're talking about brain computer interface. We can track the movement of the eyes. There are lots and lots of technologies that overlaying there and they can actually be integrated within the metaverse. So next slide, please. So if we are talking about digital accessibility in general and universal design. So I'm not going to go into, for the sake of time, I'm not going to go into all of the details here, but the, the, there are basic principles that needs to be considered whether we're developing, developing an assistive digital tool or platform, or we are developing accessibility within the metaverse itself. So things need to be perceivable uh, via different senses. Uh, they need to be robust and operable. They need to be understood using different senses as well. So all of these comes into play and there have been standards for that. But I think with those standards, particularly when it comes to the metaverse and as also the ITU is working on, these standards will be developed further to include different technologies and different use of technologies. So next, please. 
Yeah, so let, let me let let me give an example here to things that we have uh, in Egypt worked on and platforms that we use these digital tools that you can think of as also like uh, they are platforms, but also they're using the technologies to kind of enable uh, additional accessibility for PWDs. So this is an example. For example, we have the Egyptian Relay Center for PWDs. This is a tool or an application and a call center that's working 24 seven, uh, developed on uh, uh, mobile phones for Android and for iPhone, if you wish. This you can call using sign language uh, to call a 24 seven relay center that can connect you to emergency services as well as to uh, automatic translation. And let me also recap a little bit. So when we're talking about the technology, the technology might be there, but also it's, it's use and application and standardization, there are challenges for that. So as also, if we're talking about different languages, for example, the Arabic language is a, a little bit challenging, but there is a lot of technologies that are developed for the Arabic language. So these tools become helpful and very useful and enabling. Uh, this is another thing we're talking about accessibility of digital services. So when we are talking about uh, sign language, so this is a, a, a this is just a screenshot from one of the panels of uh, or, or service outlets for electricity services that have been developed uh, in collaboration with the Ministry of uh, Electricity. Uh, one of the companies developed that. Uh, under uh, the guidance of supervision of NAID and MCIT. And actually what it does here is to put in an accessible, easy format, uh, the different services also to play sound back and also the sign language here. So when we're talking about changing from text to sign language, it doesn't necessarily need to be that complicated. It needs to be standardized. So there is something called the uh, Egyptian uh, dictionary for sign language. Uh, there, uh, this is something that has been developed and there is an inference system. Also, you can put more AI components on it. But what it does is actually it records a dictionary from videos for different words, for thousands of words, and then you can stitch them together if you wish to kind of be able to communicate, but for the agent can communicate with the customer uh, who's coming to take the service and has a communication difficulty. Uh, the other way uh, to kind of understand from the sign language, there are FM efforts to use AI for that, but it's still a little bit more challenging, or, although there are platforms who are working hard towards that or for certain efforts towards that. So next slide, please. So this is if we're talking about services, but let's talk about also the tools that we do have nowadays. So we have seen the VR. So the VR, for example, you can use VR for rehabilitation purposes. You can use it for gaming, as I just alluded to. But you also one needs to be careful because the side effects that might result from such tools. Uh, for example, when I wear a VR headset, I myself become a little bit dizzy. There are also more advanced tools, uh, like the augmented reality tools. And we have seen lately the Apple Quest and before it, the uh, 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 the, the, or the Apple, uh, I'm sorry, the, 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 the Apple uh, ProVision, and we have seen before it the Microsoft HoloLens, and you can use these glasses, for example, uh, to change from voice to text. So this becomes very enabling if you think about it. If someone is crossing the street and he can't hear actually the surrounding, uh, so it becomes a little bit challenging. So this can turn voices and describe voices, it can turn text. It's really, it can be an enabling technology. Although I think they are still a little bit bulky for everyday use. There is also, if we're talking about the content itself, because the content uh, being, being it, uh, done uh, by an immersive environment can be a real enablement for education and different senses and cognitive uh, uh, abilities. Dr. So I think we'll talk more about this, but right now, actually, I'm talking to you from an immersive stage that can be used for teleporting or for conferencing. It can be used also a very advanced tool for content development that can develop content and education material, simulation, modeling, 
it can add accessibility feature to enable verification, for example, for PWDs. Next slide, please. Enabling people with visual impairments yeah. to this navigate virtual reality, actually. the haptic and so audio. So maybe, maybe we can do Virtual uh, reality experiences uh, today the rely the video. primarily on the visual This is, for example, we can use a VR environment accessible for uh, as a source, not just for gaming here, a novel but VR experience it's a research tool and audio who has developed to enable this environment with to kind of for rehabilitation or for training using a haptic feedback to kind of training using the white stick, for example. So this is one example where things can go or can be used, or these tools can be used for. Can you go to the next slide, please? Next slide. Yeah. So when we're talking about AR, no, the, the slide before that, please. Yeah. So when we're talking about AR, so AR is, is really very helpful and enabling, enabling technology but, I, but the devices are still a little bulky and heavy. So this is one example of a technology that is still in work. One of the companies is working on it. I think this is, this is a promotional video. And you can see here, it becomes like an eyeglass. So when the technology reaches this maturity, things would be more accessible and available. This is apart from the cost of this is a different story. So can we go to the next uh, slide, please? So now we're starting to speak about immersive environment. So this is like, this is an immersive environment that can be, you can do with it a, a behavioral studies. You, you, this can be a, a gaming environment, can be a teaching environment. This is using projectors really. Uh, and as you can see here, this is really, this might be very nice tools, although might be a little bit expensive though. But let's go to the next slide here. And this is where I'm talking to you about so I'm talking to you from, from an immersive environment here. So if we go to the next camera, please. So this is an immersive environment. This is an example of a studio or an extended reality studio where you can produce a very advanced content development and storytelling actually. So these studios, they don't just use, uh, they use very advanced virtual real-time virtual production tools. I'm not going to go into the details of that, but if we can see, we can get inside of the environment where I'm actually inside of the environment here. Um, I'm not sure a little bit here. Let me see. So let me go here. Let me give one example for the sake of time um, where I, I would like to show you how immersive this environment can be. Uh, okay. This is for example, we have moved now to a virtual world. This is like a temple, an Egyptian uh, doom or something, right? We can walk around, navigate in it. We can explain, we get immersed into this uh, environment actually. So let me, I'm inside of this environment. I'm just showing the environment about me right now, but let me put myself in it here and coming back. So maybe we can put the presentation off if you don't mind and just show my, um, and show my feed, my camera feed, please, on Zoom, okay? So, okay, so I think uh, I need a little bit more time here. So maybe we can take it in the Q&A part to show this more. But uh, okay, now I am in here. You can see here, I'm in the Zoom here. I'm in a different environment. So, so this is where things might head actually. And you can put a lot of accessibility features here in this environment. So with that, I think I'll conclude my presentation and thank you for your time with us. Thank you so much, Dr. Al Shaki, for this really interesting presentation. And now I want to turn over to Dr. Soha Alzabadni, founder of the Tomb um, Foundation and lecturer at the American University of Egypt. So Dr. Soha has uh, extensive experience in the field of education, having served as a school principal, teaching and learning program director, 
special and gifted education coordinator and teacher in several KPL international schools in Egypt for over 20 years. So Dr. Soha, over to you. Thank you, and I'm so pleased to be here with you all and honored to participate in today's discussion, Digital Transformation Dialogue, the, to discuss the importance of the uh, SDG for quality of education uh, and accessibility and its relation with uh, SDG 11. Uh, so uh, today we would like to focus on how educators, content providers, and school leaders are or should be using technology to redesign school operations for inclusivity and transform uh, curriculum and digital content as well, create uh, innovative, uh, inclusive and equitable uh, pathways uh, using up-to-date technology. So let's first look at the, um, before we start to the foundation, uh, or the legislative foundation to support all that. So looking at uh, Egypt Vision 2030, we try to, we seek to achieve the transformation of the Egyptian education system to ensure first that universal uh, access to high quality education and training, foundation learning for, uh, for, uh, for everyone and skills for sustainable future. And that's actually what we are aiming for since 2018 uh, with the education reform. Uh, we had a very strong emphasis on curriculum development, inclusivity, and digital uh, transformation as well. So the several, edu uh, several um, Egyptian ministries uh, with incorporation of multiple international entities issued several inclusive policies to include uh, um, early childhood and early years, the early intervention, inclusive handbook for teachers in the 4K uh, to 6, uh, grade six, and also the different universities um, implemented inclusive practices to support their uh, high uh, high education students as well. So um, first thing, moving from the macro system policies into the school level implementation policy to promote inclusion. Actually, what we are looking uh, here is uh, it's a model to support inclusion in all the, in the school on the school level. It's called the uh, this is Villa and thousand two thousand six. Uh, they propose a school model. And in this model, the leadership, as you can see, it's the foundation of in floor on the ground floor, the foundation of this this schoolhouse to create inclusive change in the school system. They utilize collaborative and problem solving approach. And school leaders can successfully implement the multi-tier system of support and co-teaching model and encourage teachers to implement differentiated instruction as well in their classroom to ensure success for all students. So looking forward, uh, or the, the technologists and the school uh, uh, multi, uh, sorry, uh, school um, uh, LMS engineers and software engineers need to understand the previously mentioned education system and the structure of integrated technology into the school management system or the learning management system to ensure inclusivity. So for instance, the multi-tier system of support uh, categorized students in three different uh, categories. The first tier, which is like the 80% of students having like universal teaching, and caters for the typical students, then move into the tier, uh, the second tier, which the 15% of students, we are giving them targeted intervention to support their needs. And the last uh, tier is the tier three, they, the 5% of students which it needs intensive intervention uh, um, to support their learning. Um, so we are implementing the special education and the gifted education um, uh, um, principles in to support those students. So I move now transitioning from the school system into the core of teaching and learning, which is the, the curriculum implementation. We successfully at in Egypt we successfully revised the Egyptian K to six uh, um, curriculum, and uh, and we developed the digital content through a variety or uh, of platforms, including the Ministry of Education Knowledge uh, Gate for digital learning and the Egyptian Knowledge Bank and others. So as you can see that this, our, this is our reform, we are more focused now on the skill-based, practical skills and student-centered approach to guarantee the high quality education. We use the interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary techniques to integrate uh, various uh, subjects. The digital transformation is a key element for this educational change and formative and summative assessment to support the different abilities and performance of students and to make sure that we have the optimal reach, the optimal learning outcome as well. Uh, 
So in order to do that, we in Egypt, we implemented the, universe, the universal design for learning approach that emphasized placing the students in the center of the learning and providing equal opportunity for success using vari varied uh, uh, teaching methods and remove learning barriers as well. By integrating the UDL principles that, uh, into the teacher's training and the teacher's guide as well, all educators in Egypt can effectively uh, accommodate all students in their learning uh, classroom. We start with the diagnostic assessments that uh, that's, that's, it's implemented in the beginning of each um, of each chapter or each uh, textbook to identify the children's strengths and, and weaknesses, which can be used to cater personalized activity tailored to their individual needs. So we implement the three principles of the uh, UDL, what I learn, how I learn, and why I learn in all activities within the school uh, book, which allow the diverse learners to learn with their own pace and with their own uh, abilities. The, then we aim to develop um, uh, innovative pathways that leverage the assistive technology as uh, Dr. Uh, Sharkawi said, enabling techniques. So I'm not going to go through them, but we, uh, we, we were able to connect the principles of the UDL into the assistive technology in our schools. So uh, uh, when I present the, uh, when I, I use uh, uh, techniques or aids for memory, for, for the attention, for grasping the, the student's attention in the classrooms, we are using audio books, uh, uh, specialized mobile uh, applications, amplification system, fluency assistant devices, and much more as well. But we, it, it's never enough. So we move to the second, um, the second level of support, which this is where uh, Dr. Sharkawi and I trying to uh, come up with a new project to support and have more new pathways supporting inclusivity using immersive learning. And this is something that we are working on. So by definition, as you can see here, talking about the extended reality, Two words that captured my eye when I started to read the, this uh, definition, which is like the, this is a physical, physical environment, which is like as an, uh, an advocate and a, an inclusive educator and, and a leader, I look at the physical environment and how I can remove barriers in order to support all students in my class or in my school. So the, I looked at the physical environment and, and its challenges and the hope or, and the opportunities using the virtual uh, environment with its solutions. So this is very important. The aim is to remove the, as many barriers as I can and to make sure that we have enough support in our, for our kids using um, immersive learning as well. So the challenges that I can see and the disabilities that I can see, it is related into the sensory and intelligent cognitive uh, uh, abilities of the students and the adaptive behavior as well. So such as the delay of comprehension, limited vocab, slow learning, uh, slow, sorry, slow reading and writing, and distractibility, and more experience difficulty in establishing relationship, friendship in, inside my classes, interpreting social uh, cues and signals, and demonstrating a lack, a lack of um, uh, organization as well. So we attempt to develop solutions. So we categorize the learning and behavior barriers into several areas. Processing speed, memory, attention, comprehension, and social adaptation, as you can see here. So one, one effective solution is the utilization of the video-based storytelling as opposed to the book-based and the picture-based approaches. So this, uh, the, uh, the VBST, uh, presents a more comprehensive medium for, uh, for constructing mental image for our kids of the story component corresponding to verbal input as well. Video-based uh, uh, storytelling effectively showcases the dynamic interaction among educators and scenes similar to real life events. So generally this tool can support social interactions among students, and especially uh, for the students who need this the most, students with learning difficulty uh, in our schools. So uh, this innovative solution plays a significant role in, in improving the educational experience for and assisting students in their learning process, not just by shaping their behavior. We plan in to incorporate 
assistive technology tools within the video that allows students to understand the content and the material on their own pace, which ultimately enhances uh, their comprehension and interaction and retention of the uh, inf information and the, uh, uh, the concepts that they uh, acquired or aim to acquire. So we can include such tools in video to support their sequential memory, their attention as well. So um, this is in a nutshell how we support uh, students and how we are planning to support more student, students using extended reality in our schools, inshallah. Back to you, Dr. Christina. Okay. Thank you so much for this very interesting uh, discussion today. And uh, it's actually now time for us to have a little bit of uh, Q&A. So let me check if there is any question in the Q&A. No, not yet. Uh, I think people can be a little bit shy. So maybe I can make a start. Uh, Pila, could I start with you? So why should accessibility follow a universal design approach? Um, to me, uh, there is. Uh, it has to be that way because um, we have to design. From universal design has got two main features. One of it, the first one is that you begin designing any product or service with accessibility in mind, and to me, this is uh, what we have to do. Whenever you start designing anything, one of the features is accessibility, uh, and that has to be there at the beginning. Otherwise, it would become very expensive, it would become not good for everyone, and it would become uh, really sort of orthopedic. So first of all, before you start designing anything, it has to be uh, with all the accessibility and with as many accessibility features as possible. And the second one is that it should be for everyone. It should not only be for this group, a clinically uh, defined group or for this other clinically defined group. It should be for everyone. And over the years, for the past, I don't know, 30 years that I've been working here, at the beginning, we were designing for the blind, for example, because they could not see. But the blind, they often, they do see something. So they do have a partial sight, but not fully black sight. And then we realized that what we were designing for the blind, they were also very good for other groups, for other people. So just to just to stick to very small groups with physical or uh, cognitive disabilities is not a good idea. The idea is to do it for general, uh, universal uh, concepts. So for when the image is not there, for when you're not able to read, when you're not able to see, when you're not able to hear, these are the way to design for everyone. And then you realize that perhaps someone with in the autist, uh, autism spectrum will benefit from uh, an audio description, for example, which is for the blind. But then it or someone who has got any kind of a cognitive uh, issue would benefit with someone tells you twice the same input. Um, and we had found that and we have got plenty of information and data uh, saying that this is the way to go um, ahead. So that's the reason. And also, I would like to thank uh, Soha and uh, and uh, and Abdel uh, Monem because I really enjoy your presentations. Uh, and it was very nice. One was to do with technology and the other one was a very concrete case of education. So it's perfect. I think this, I'm sorry I am in this, but I think this um, uh, webinar was very nice because it went from the abstract to more concrete and more concrete. And I really am very proud of what you're doing in Egypt. I'm very impressed actually. And I like the idea also that uh, to make something real, you have to experience it. And otherwise you can't, you know, and that is so very important. So thank you for bringing that up to the table because it is true. It is, it is the way I agree with you. Thank you. That's one for. Uh, could we turn off the presentation and bring the uh, all the speakers like uh, cameras on so we can quickly have the discussion, please? Yeah. Thank you, Pilar. I completely agree with you. I, I think what's uh, happening in Egypt is very impressive. So a massive congratulations to you guys for such wonderful, you know, progress. And uh, my next 
question is to Dr. Al Sakhi. So, what are the opportunities and challenges for the inclusion of PWD in the virtual world? Yes. Thank you very much for uh, for this nice opportunity, actually, and thank you, Dr. Pilar, for the nice words and encouraging words. Actually, there's a lot to be done, and there are a lot of challenges still. So as you see that the technology, the cost of the technology, it is still an issue, and the availability and affordability of it is an issue. And this is what we're working hard to find alternatives till the technology becomes more available and affordable. Obviously, the, the, the technology of these kind of advancements, uh, it, it will still remain costly for some time. So this is one thing. The other thing is obviously the standards and the ethical issues in the virtual world. So this is also a challenge. Um, so the content itself and the development of it, it's a challenge and it also represents a lot of opportunities. So the challenge is some content, if you are talking about it, it's more like a cartoonish site. And this might be useful for some purposes, but for other purposes, you need to develop more realistic environments and things like this. But also there is a lot of, as we pointed to, there are a lot of opportunities when it comes to the content and using the virtual tools uh, for content production. For example, particularly when, as I alluded to in my talk, when you're talking about the virtual labs, so this is really enabling. So if you're talking about schools who can't afford to get real labs everywhere, for example, particularly in rural areas, uh, uh, or less fortunate areas, these virtual labs becomes an enabling tools uh, for education. So you don't necessarily need to use complicated glasses even, you can use a normal computer with a screen. Also part of the challenges that are there is obviously the internet connectivity, things are becoming, in Egypt things are, uh, in terms of internet connectivity, there is a lot of achievement in this uh, area, but when we're talking about worldwide, there might be still places where internet connectivity becomes more challenging. And when you put more things in the metaverse, uh, the demand over the transfer rate becomes more challenging. Uh, also, the opportunities, as we're talking about the content in general, so when we're talking about digital uh, content, and we're talking about in education, for example, the EPUB or the DAISY Consortium, this represents a lot of opportunities, particularly for print disabilities or even communication difficulties or people who have speech disabilities. Uh, you can put videos, it's a structured content, but also the quality of the videos that are being produced and put there or the educational uh, uh, journey uh, also needs to be very well structured. So I'll actually conclude my answer here with this thing with this is part of the technology challenges when you're in a virtual environment you know you 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 still uh, there are a lot of uh, tools that are needed and you can still get glitches so i'm i'm I, we had a glitch with the tab that i'm using to control this environment actually this is an immersive as well as an extended reality so if you have a look at things i'm actually sitting on a stage but also it's extended so I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if I have the opportunity here, can we switch on the cameras where you can see the setup that I'm in, uh, maybe use the other camera. Yeah, you can see here that you're moving to the setup, but let's get the camera where you can see the setup. So actually I can put myself immersed in a real world or in a virtual world, but I'm actually sitting on a set of screen. So you can see here that this is, this is the studio that we are in to produce this tool. This is a studio, but you can see that we can extend this reality, although I'm interacting with it and I can see you and can talk to you, but we can extend the reality. So this is still not totally extended. So maybe we can go to the extension mode. Uh, you will see that these borders of the screen will disappear actually. So yes, so now we are in an extended environment uh, as you can see. So this is just a quick, glimpse on what we can do in terms of content development, as well as teleporting, you know, and uh, conferencing and things like that. So thank you very much.
Thank you so much. That's really impressive. I, I, I hope maybe in the future ITU can do webinars in this kind of immersive way that will just add a little bit more interactive and immersive experience. My next question to Soha uh, is actually from the audience. So Dr. Emma Otieno asks, so um, what strategy can we deploy to ensure true access to the most vulnerable groups, especially in rural communities in developing countries? who are faced with economic hardship, how can we ensure accessibility for them? What's your opinion? Thank you very much for this question. This question is very important. Uh, talking about the vulnerable uh, um, uh, people and how we are supporting them. So first of all, we uh, policy is very important. The first thing is to use uh, or to implement uh, or to uh, issue a policy that supports all uh, uh, the, um, the different stakeholders as well and different populations. And uh, moving from the policy into the implementation. Uh, so we I had uh, the opportunity to read more about the intranet and the offline uh, material that we can support students uh, with and support teachers and the, in the teachers training process as well. So I know that the infrastructure, most of the uh, of the uh, places uh, uh, around the world, not only in Egypt, we have scarcity of resources and we need to reach out for more people so i believe that innovative solutions and entra uh, and entra um Internet and uh, offline material to be uh, to support the education and the, the learning for uh, teachers as well as a parent even and the students is a very important solution or effective solution that can be uh, uh, placed on the on the table uh, for more discussion and thank you again for this question. That's wonderful. I want to thank all of our amazing speakers and our lovely audience. So uh, I'm now going to hand over back to Naveen. Over to you, Naveen. Well, thank you so much, Christina, and thank you to all esteemed speakers for this lively and engaging dialogue. I think we needed two more hours, but uh, we have <laughs> to stick to the time frame. So again, thank you very much. And now I would like to call on Mr. Shin Gakang, Chair of ITU Focus Group on the Metaverse, our dear colleague who has been guiding us for over a year now. Uh, of course, uh, he's the Vice President, Assistant Vice President at ETRI in the Republic of Korea. Uh, please, sir, you have uh, the floor to deliver the closing remarks. Hi, thank you so much, Arabian, and also thank you so much, uh, Dr. Zhang, for your uh, hard work. So, and uh, I'd like to make up a concise uh, closing remarks at this time. So, ladies and gentlemen, as we conclude our webinar on in immersive inclusivity, enhancing both world with accessibility, I would like to ex uh, express my sincere appreciation to all our distinguished uh, speakers for their enlightening uh, presentations and to our participants for your engagement. Your contributions uh, have illuminated the uh, best potential of enhancing both world with accessibility features. We explored how text-to-speech uh, haptic feedback and uh, customizable controls, among other innovative solutions, can empower individuals with uh, diverse abilities to fully participate in virtual activ activities. As we mark World uh, Autism Awareness Day 2024, we are reminded that uh, the digital world must be inclusive and accessible for all. The uh, intersection of sustainable development goals and uh, uh, autism advocacy shines a light on the importance of building an uh, equitable and uh, diverse digital uh, landscape. ITU is committed to continuing the conversation on digital transformation and inclusivity. I encourage you to join the upcoming ITU Digital Transformation Dialogue webinars related to metaverse and accessibility that will be held on 25th of April this month. Uh, these forums uh, serve as an opportunity for us to learn from each other, share best practices, and uh, collaborate, collaborate on solutions to make uh, digital technologies more accessible and inclusive. Finally, I'd like to uh, invite you to join the next meeting of ITUT Focus on Metaverse that will take place on 30th 
April uh, this month also as a fully virtual meeting. Thank you once again for your participation and uh, contributions. Let's uh, continue to uh, work to continue to work together to uh, ensure that the digital transformation journey leaves uh, no one behind. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Kang, for your words. And I would like again to thank our uh, wonderful moderator and distinguished speakers, as well as the audience for your attendance and participation. I also encourage you to join the next I2 events. We have a fireside chat on ethical horizons, navigating responsible AI in the digital landscape. This one will take place on the 16th of April. There is also a webinar on Metaverse 360 on the 22nd of April. There is also a session, Ask the Expert session on breaking barriers in the Metaverse on the 25th of April. And in general, I would like to uh, encourage you to check regularly the IT website over the next months to see uh, the, most, the updates in the webinars because these are really wonderful opportunities to delve into new and exciting development, developments in the digital transformation space. Uh, many thanks to the ITU team for your wonderful support. And now I would like to declare this webinar officially concluded. Thank you again and goodbye. Thank you, bye -bye. Thank you so much, bye-bye. Thank you, Dr. Zhang, for your moderation. <laughs>